I swear. Does not look like a flower. Did you know fossils could be made by like the imprint that something leaves in it? Like, so this could, could be a fossil of a flower, but it's really just a carving. But this leads me to think of this new cool story that we're about to read because it's all about fossils and finding all these discoveries and guys, Miss Lawson loves a good adventure. So I know I'm really bad at saying this, but my name is Miss Lawson. You've done a few lessons with me already, hopefully by now. But today we are starting this new book, Mary Anning, The Girl Who Cracked Open the World. And if that title doesn't get you interested in what we're about to read, I don't know what else will. So let's go ahead and check out what this book is gonna be about. So obviously, just by looking at this picture, I can tell this is not a story that's taking place right now. And I'm sure you um, fourth graders can figure it out too, because I know how smart you guys are. Looking at what Mary is wearing, I know that this story must have taken place um, a little bit ago, like in the past. This is also a biography. So a biography is a true story. So Mary Anning is a real person about someone's life written by another person. In biographical writing, information about the subject can be presented using different points of view. So today's learning intention, I know my picture is kind of covering that up. Today's learning intention is we're going to learn to analyze a character and I'm assuming y'all are figured it out. It's going to be Mary Anning because she is the main character of our story through what they say, think, or do. And I know that we've done a lesson like this before, and it was something you guys are really good at. But on top of just what they say or do and think, we're also going to look at how they are perceived by others or how others see them. So today we're going to know we are successful when we can look back for details in the text and find those details that describe the character. So their actions, their words, or their thoughts. Then we're gonna be able to describe what is that character like. Then we're also gonna need to look for different points of view that describe the character as well. Today's foundational skill is something exciting. I love reading, as you guys already know. So today's activity is going to be reading this passage called the National Anthem, but your focus is going to be to decode and read those words with the endings ER and EST. So that list of the words that are going to be in the text are right here. So earlier, greatest, or just a few, um, and then you're going to hopefully have this in your Seesaw account, and you're going to get to record yourself and listen to how well you do. That's one of my favorite things to be able to listen to myself read and see places where I can get better and see some of my strengths as well. Now for vocabulary, you know how much I love my vocabulary. The first word is something so funny. It's lurked. And I just look at that cat in the grass because my cats do this all the time. So what can lurked mean? It looked the same, but something had changed. Sadness hung in the air. It lurked in the shadows, and Mary couldn't bear to be there. So what could it mean? Hid in or around a place. So that cat's hiding in the grass and sadness. Oh my gosh, what perfect timing. This cat is lurking in my screen. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, fourth graders. Hold on one second. Okay, that was just too good. Now that Kane is no longer lurking um, in this screen, we know that it's hid in or around a place. Our next vocabulary word, oh no, I kind of showed it, or I, oh my gosh, I almost, I exposed it. Man, this is just too perfect with all these vocabulary words. Um, let's look at that picture. The roots are exposed in this picture, and the wind in water broke the cliffs open, and fossils that had been buried were now exposed. So, you know, I already kind of gave it away if you were paying attention. Exposed means they're not protected or covered, they're showing. So like I showed that answer and these roots are showing, that is what exposed means. So maybe your teacher decides to have you do one of our tables that we've been doing where you do the definitions, antonyms, synonyms. Um, you might be doing that as well. 
um, or just write those in a sentence. I love when we can use our new vocabulary words in a sentence. All right, guys, on to our new story. Mary Anning, the girl who cracked open the world. Mary, Mary, where are you going? Get my arrow ready. So let's see. There's Mary. She's taking a run for it. Out of the cottage, away from her chores, and down to the sea. That's where Mary was going. Over rocks, slippery with seaweed slime, near the crumbling cliffs of England's south coast. That's where you'd find Mary. It was a dangerous place. A wild, windy world. Falling pebbles plink plonked off her bonnet, but Mary didn't care. There were fossils here. Ancient fish teeth and curly shells and animal bones in the rock. Curiosities, or curious, the treasure seekers called them. They were odd, dainty things to look at. And ooh, and ah, over. Oh, so they ooh, and ah, over. And Mary's family could sell as many as she could find. Oops, so we're at a stop sign, so we need to stop. What does Mary think about at night? Show me where that text says so. So it's going to say it on this page and we're going to look. But were those rock creatures alive at one time? When did they live? What did they do? Did anyone think about this? Shivering under her quilt at night, Mary thought of these things. Her feet were sore and her back ached from hours and hours hunched like a gull picking away at the rocks. But still she thought. She wondered again as she closed her eyes, but the mysteries in the rocks would have to wait. Mary was fast asleep. So I want you to pause. This is something you can easily find on your own. What does Mary think about at night? Show me where the text says so. All right, I'm gonna keep moving on. One dark stormy day, Mary sat in her father's workshop, a cozy, dusty place. It was quiet too. No one was there except Mary and her father, the two fossil finders hard at work. Her father chip chipped away at rocks until the fossils appeared. Mary took the tiny pick that her father made for her and chip chipped away bits of rock too. Everything Mary knew about fossils, she learned while working with her father. So they look like a really good team. All right. When the storm ended, Mary grabbed her basket, hammer, and chisel. So I look at this, this looks like a chisel, because this is the hammer. She ran out of the workshop and straight to the sea. Mary knew that after a storm was the best time to search for fossils. The wind and water broke the cliffs open, and fossils that had been buried were now exposed. Oh man, I forgot that picture. So it would be the tree roots, they're exposed. Mary picked through the rocks. Soon her fingers were numb from the cold. <clears throat> her skirts were muddy and wet, but Mary didn't mind. She was happy there, looking for fossils and helping her father. Ooh, there's another stop sign. What do the people in the town think about Mary? So this is one of our big understandings where we look at what other people think of the main character. Um, so we're gonna learn about it on this page. What kind of girl spends her day like that? Shouldn't Mary be indoors at school? The townspeople wondered and whispered these things whenever they saw Mary. Mary, they said, had always been different. Was it because she had been struck by lightning when she was a tiny sickly baby? There were three townspeople near Mary that day who were struck by lightning too. They didn't survive, only Mary did. And look at her now, curious, stubborn, and independent. Mary did whatever she wanted to do. So, see if you can figure this out without me. Pause it here. Hopefully you saw that, what kind of girl spends her days like that? Should Mary be indoors at school? It seems like they're judging her a little bit, right? So they think right here, they think she's different, which I would think sometimes different is good because I like being different but I think they're looking at it as a bad way. They think she's kind of weird. So they think she's curious, stubborn, and independent. So that's what they think about her. So we kind of got another light on Mary than just looking at what she thinks. 
When Mary was 11, her father died. Soon after that, she stepped into his dusty workshop. It looked the same, but something had changed. Sadness hung in the air. It lurked in the shadows, and Mary couldn't bear to be there. She went down to the cliffs, noisy with seabirds and crashing waves, but it was no better there. Every fossil she found made her think of her father. So Mary stayed away from her favorite place. Man, it's kind of sad. Look at her. It's kind of heartbreaking. So what does Mary think about at the seacoast? And how does she feel about working with her father? Well, let's look back at this page with her. When she's working with her father, how does she feel? Her father chip chipped away at the rocks until the fossils appeared. Mary took the tiny pick that her father made for her and chip chipped away. Everything Mary knew about fossils, she learned while working with her father. So it seemed like Mary really liked working with her father because then later on, it talked about when he was gone, she was just so sad. So it's like losing him made her realize how much that she loved him and missed him. And then what does Mary think about at the seacoast? So if we look back at the very beginning, Mary kind of would look for those fossils, right? And she wouldn't just find them and sell them. She would think about these used to be things that lived. So she was very curious and very adventurous. And yeah, so that tells us about her. So she's loving, she cares for her dad. She's adventurous, curious. All right, guys, now it's, oop, now it's your turn. How would you describe Mary? I kind of gave you some on accident, um, but you can't just take my answers because you're going to have to go back in the text and you're going to have to find details and examples from the story to support your description. I can't wait to see what you guys think. Um, it might be on Seesaw as usual, or it could just be paper and pencil, but make sure you get this done. Good luck. Have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.